Hi, everyone. Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I'm Liz Brown Swanson coming to you virtually from my home in Rancho Palos Verdes. And I'm Maria Soreo coming to you from my home a little further away from Rancho Palos Verdes. Liz, so great to be back with you and, of course, all of our viewers. And we have such a great lineup of guests today, but we are focusing in on the coronavirus, which you have been battling with for the last month and a half. You look great. Tell us how you're feeling. Thank you. I can say I beat COVID-19. Thank yeah. you for asking. Um, you know, I ended up being exposed over a month ago and my husband at an event and since then have fully recovered. I was tested actually with my husband on April 1st and we did find out we were positive. And then now with all the focus on being retested or to find out if we have antibodies, we were we participated and we went to the only drive-through uh, testing site on the peninsula, which is being offered by the Palos Verdes Medical Group. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been in the headlines making news because they're offering testing for the antibodies and testing for the virus. And the two of us um, just went there over the weekend and were able to get tested for antibodies and um, the virus. And so, um, drum roll, we were negative for the virus now. So Yay. I was thinking, That's great. But, it's so a lot of people worry because that they, they've gone through it because the symptoms can linger and I was feeling not great for about a month so I was thankful that you know the virus I've shed that you know the virus is gone at least going right. to the test and then also um I did have the antibodies my husband did not but he's been asymptomatic so that could explain that yeah what was great to know is that so PV med group that's putting on the drive-through um with um the Dr. Lawrence Share. Mm -hmm. He's so reputable, who's a medical group, and he also is the director of the uh, Peninsula Research Associates. So they've done 200 clinical trials. He's an immunologist, Dr. Sher, who's overseeing this. And um, so I felt like I was in really good hands. Now we're going to, he's going to join us uh, virtually, you might say, just to talk about the impact of COVID-19 and who should get tested and what it all means when you do get tested. So let's, let's hear from Dr. Sher right now. So when were you sick? I was asymptomatic. You were asymptomatic. I have to say, first off, I am just so proud of my staff because they're really the ones who have been on the front line answering phones, sitting out here, as you can see, back there. And they're here eight hours, nine hours a day outside in the heat or when it was cold two weeks ago. And they're trying to help everybody. There's nothing that helped me prepare for the COVID-19 because I don't think anyone can be prepared for the COVID-19. What's really made me able to be ready for it in a different sort of way is I'm an allergist immunologist and an immunologist is what studies infections and antibodies and the way the infections infect the body. What made me one step even closer to prepared is um, what I've spent the past 20 years doing is research and researching new vaccines, researching new medical treatments for all certain, all many different therapeutic areas. You're offering uh, the community uh, COVID-19 testing service, testing for the virus and antibodies. Can you kind of walk us through each test that you're doing and just sort of what people need to know and what, what your information you're getting from this? Well, what started first is patients were concerned do they right now have COVID-19? In other words, are they affected with the virus which is called SARS-CoV-2? And these are the patients who are acutely ill. So we started with the nasal swab, the nasal pharyngeal swab, which detects virus. And that's through polymerase chain reaction that we sent to the laboratory that we were getting back in two to three days. This helps a patient say, I have the infection or not. Once we're able to determine that, um, we're able to help them in many different ways. What came next now is the antibody testing that everybody's hearing about. And so we were able to obtain those tests because people are now going back and saying, in February I had this problem, in January I had this problem. So they wanted to be able to say, was it truly COVID or not. So antibody testing that we're able to be able to do now isn't saying that you're immune to it. It isn't saying I'm not going to get it again. It's being able to say whether you had it. But unfortunately, we're not at the point to say that you won't catch it again because we don't know if these antibodies are going to say they're protective or not. And that's going to take time. As we've talked about before, um, this is a four-month-old virus. That's it. So it takes more than four months to be able to say everything about the virus. And I teasingly always tell people we know a lot about nothing at this point. And so eventually we're going to know a lot about a lot. So it's going to take our time. 
It's going to take still several months to longer. But the vaccine will be here. The vaccine is our cure. And once the vaccine's out, then that we have. So what are the patients here, your clients going through? And I'll be doing it with my husband. So what are we, what are, what's going to happen to us when we... Well, they call up, they call up the office um, or they email the office and they schedule a telehealth because it's important that we find out what type of illness they had over the past several months. We find out if they have any what we call comorbidities, which is high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, chronic bronchitis or emphysema. Um, we find out what type of symptoms they had um, and then we schedule them for an appointment where they come through what you see here. Um, once they get their finger prick with whole blood, we do the test and they find out within 10 to 15 minutes. With that result, we're able, our nurse practitioner, to be able to talk to them about that result. I'm Leanne, I'm the nurse practitioner. What's your name? I'm Elizabeth Swanson. Okay, perfect. So I wanted to go over your results with you. So you came back positive for IgG. So what that tells us is that at some point, you did in fact have a COVID infection, okay? But you are not currently actively infected, meaning you're not contagious. Okay. And, and it does tell you that I have antibodies for it? Yes. Yes. So those are the antibodies for it. it. However, the unfortunate part is we don't yet know what it means to have the antibodies to COVID. So we don't know if that means that the very next time you are faced with it, your body will fight it off and you won't get sick at all. It means we still have to keep doing the social distancing. We still have to wear masks in public until we understand fully what the antibodies mean. Mm -hmm. It's not yet our key to going back to life as we know it. Really, we know social distancing is working because you have seen flattening of the curve, you know, all over on the places that are actively social distancing. And so we've seen that in the United States. We've seen that across the world. The problem is, as we get more antsy um, and if we go back out, will we see a second wave? That's the concern is that second wave when it will be seen. So we have to be, you know, very careful about what we do. Um, you know, when the politicians and when everybody says, let's go out, let's not have to social distance, we have to be careful. And with the data that we're seeing now, we have about 450 patients. We're getting a positive rate with the antibody of about 3.47% so far out of the first 450. I hope to have about 1,000 patients within the next week and a half. It's right now right there with the USC data and the uh, Santa Clara data of about 3.5 to 4 percent um, positive rate. And so if you look at that, whether it's across Palos Verdes, the hill, or whether it's across South Bay, that's a lot of cases that are out there if we multiply it across the total population. We can't say, you know, the flu is more deadly or it's equally as deadly because we don't have the idea. But we know that this is a pandemic that spread throughout the world in less than six weeks. We saw it all over. I mean, literally in less than six weeks. We have never seen anything like this. Probably it's been 100 years. I mean, I think it was uh, 1918 with a Spanish flu. That's when you saw that. And so, no, this is horrible. Well, I just want to thank you, Leanne. There's your whole team here. You guys are frontline workers, and you're out here with the virus that everybody's so afraid of. So how, how are you working through this? I mean, it's a lot. Um, I don't, you know, I think it's just when you're in the healthcare profession, it's sort of what you sign up for. I think the most important thing really is to stay positive. What I've seen out of this that I think is kind of my favorite part, if there can be, is all the generosity of the community. I mean, we've had the community reach out to us. Um, PVNet downstairs no donated our visors, which we needed. We needed face shields. They came through and made them for us. Um, we've had people donating, patients have donated food to the office, which is incredible because there's not really anywhere to eat up here at the mall right now. Um, and even just, you know, simple things. We've had people bring us cookies or cards. And I think all of that stuff really just sort of shines the light on the fact that we are still a community. And even though we can't be together in person, I think from our perspective, we still definitely feel the love, which is really nice. This is the most difficult time of our lives. Um, I've been a physician for 30 years and, you know, I've gone through a lot. I've seen a lot of problems as a, as a resident, as a fellow doing bone marrow transplants um, through my practice and dealing with people as, as close as I get to people. And being in an area like this, we become friends with all of our patients. Um, but this has been the most difficult watching people because with all of this, we have high anxiety. We're getting sad, we're getting depression, um, we're getting upset, 
and then you hear the stories. So it's been most difficult time for all of us. And so that's the first part, is we're in this together, we should be talking. It's not just illness, it's not just COVID and being sick, it's everything that goes along with it. You know, Liz, so much great information from Dr. Sharon. I know she recently presented um, to the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. That means our next guest is our good friend, the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Eileen Hupp. Eileen, thank you so much for being with us and being a regular recently here on RPV TV. Thank you so much, Liz and Marie. I appreciate the invitation. <laughs> Eileen, I know these are tough times for all of us, especially our businesses, and we will we'll get to that. But I happened to watch the incredible presentation that Dr. Cher put on through the chamber. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know your takeaways and just the value of being able to do these kinds of virtual presentations right now. Yeah, oh, thank you so much for that question. As you um, know, the Chamber instituted a weekly Zoom series for businesses uh, five weeks ago. Actually, this is our sixth week. And we've been hosting a variety of different speakers, um, including we had your mayor and city manager on two weeks ago. We've had our congressman. We were so honored to have Dr. Lauren share this past Thursday. And we had over 90 people sign up to be on it, which was awesome. Um, it is so fortunate to have an expert of his caliber who obviously knows the patient side, but also the um, clinical research side and, um, you know, has been, you know, quoted and published, um, you know, on immunology and allergies just, you know, for 20 plus years. So we're grateful to have him in our community. I think for me, some of the takeaways were, again, the importance of the physical distancing for the time being, the importance of testing. And as you spoke about, um, he is offering testing. Um, you have to go through his website to make that appointment. Um, and I know that exurgent care um, in Peninsula Center is also offering testing as well. Um, and I think one thing that he really stressed a lot in our pres his presentation to the chamber was the importance of really monitoring your health and working with your doctor because every patient is different. Um, and um, that's really, really important. So take what you're hearing on the news with a grain of salt and consult with your medical professional who knows you and knows your history. And I know by asking the question about mm -hmm. the facts, well, you know what the medical community is saying about the need to do our social distancing, mm -hmm. but because it can save lives, but then we also have to take into consideration the livelihoods that are being lost right now. Right. Um, and the fact that this is no way to live, right? For a lot of us and our businesses. So mm -hmm. when I asked him, how do we get to that balance? He said, that's an impossible question to answer right now. But I know you, the business community, you know, wants and answers what are you hearing right now in terms of the need to reopen and what, what what's what are our what are our local businesses telling you um very definitely the message is we need to have a balance between economics and epidemiology and when you think of it um there are many diseases that we have in our nation and around the world that exist and we do business every day um, now, that is not minimizing or meant to minimize in any way, shape, or form the severity of this public, you know, of this uh, current situation. And we understand that people are concerned and, um, you know, understandably so because it's so uncertain. But our business community feels very strongly that all business is essential and that a well thought out careful reopening plan is absolutely necessary. Um, the current impact on the United States economy will take a very long time to work its way through. Um, and there's the toll not only on people's livelihoods, but also on mental health as well. Um, and I think that's very important as well as other health. If we're not going to the doctor and getting our regular checkups for heart disease or cancer or whatever it might be, if we're not getting our teeth cleaned and those kinds of things, that will have um, spillover effect as well. So we are hearing very much that there is a need for a well thought out plan to reopen. Yes. And Eileen, you've really been in the front lines as far as talking to the businesses locally. And I know you almost been not like a therapist to some of the businesses because mm -hmm. they were so concerned. Are, are mm -hmm. things getting to the point where you think that the, the, the reopening is more thought out? Are they kind of making it over that hump? Well, you know, I do get a lot of emails and text messages and phone calls at nine and 10 o'clock at night from businesses who are very concerned about their ability to reopen. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, this, this situation where, you know, 85 to 90% of the economy nationwide is 
is on lockdown um, has never ever occurred in the history of our country. Um, and the impact not just on businesses, but onto state and local governments and their budgets and their ability to continue to provide the services that are so important to all of us, it's very, very far reaching. So how many businesses will be able to reopen remains to be seen. Do we have any idea right here in the, on the peninsula, like what percentages of businesses have had to shut down completely. And also about the unemployment we're faced mm -hmm. with in our community. I know they're saying one out of six Americans has lost their job because of the mm -hmm. pandemic. We don't have, um, at least I don't have access to good current micro unemployment statistics to be able to tell you what the unemployment rate is on the peninsula as of you know last Friday. Um, but I will tell you that we know historically that the peninsula's unemployment rate is always lower than what you would see for say the LA metro area. But I'm also gonna say, don't kid yourself. This situation has impacted you know, I'm going to say, you know, pretty much every economic sector across the United States. Think about it. It's not just the hourly workers who have been laid off. It's corporate attorneys. It's think mm -hmm. about the dentists, okay, who can't open their offices except for emergencies. I know and that there's been so much talk about the small business loans, but mm -hmm. you have seen the other side of that where it's more difficult than people once thought, if you can tell us about that. Yeah, it's, you know, that's a really good question. So obviously, um, everyone was very, everyone in the business community across the country was very pleased when the um, Congress passed two and a half weeks ago, the first CARES Act, which, you know, had the 349 billion in the PPP loans, okay, um, which, as you know, are eligible to be forgiven. It's not automatic, but it's pretty straightforward to get those forgiven if you, if you meet certain criteria. Um, and obviously we had another infusion into the PPP program that was just signed last week. The challenge has been, and our chamber, I have to say, we, I saw this coming five days on the, when, it, the, when the bill was first passed two and a half weeks ago, it was on a weekend. And Monday morning I started calling banks. And, um, and again, the plan, the, the loan program didn't open until the Friday of that week. Um, and I was already on that Monday hearing from banks that they were only going to give those loans to their existing clients. The PPP wow. loans have to be applied for through a bank. Now note that Congress didn't give the banks any requirements. They didn't say you can only deal with your clients. They just said, here's what you have to fill in. Here's what you have to do. So the banks themselves took care of their best clients first, okay? And I don't fault them for that. That's their business strategy. But you saw what happened, which was the Shake Shack and the Ruth Chris Steakhouse getting those loans. When I was getting calls at nine o'clock at night from small business owners here who were frantic that no one would accept their loans. Or maybe they had, a, maybe they were a client of a bank, but they weren't, they didn't have an existing loan. So the bank said, we're not gonna deal with you. So we reached out proactively. We called banks, our chamber called banks all over the South Bay that week. And we were able to find three banks that were taking loans from non-clients. They all happened to be chamber member banks. And so we sent that information out to all of our members. I have to applaud the, um, the leadership, the proactive leadership of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes for um, going forward and putting together that small business assistance plan. Um, and the first piece of which is, is uh, refunding business license taxes to businesses that I think have under a, one and a half million of gross receipts in, this, in 2019. So that's a huge step forward. I know they're looking at some other programs as well and we really appreciate that. Not all the local cities are in a position to do that, but we are continuing to encourage them to look at other things they might be able to do. The community as a whole has been very supportive of our businesses and I wanna thank them for that. The community has been supporting our Great Peninsula Takeout, encouraging um, our residents to you know, do takeout or delivery from our local restaurants. Um, RPV is keeping a great list on your city's website um, with open for business on it. And we keep sending them information about businesses that are open both brick and mortar and virtually. This is a great time to join the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce because you have resources, you have help, that you're offering businesses. And so if they wanna do that, they should just log on to the website or and call you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you for that. We are a nonprofit organization as well. And just so you know, the Chamber of Commerce, we were left out of the PPP loan program. So um, that was done by the Congress. And so we can't even apply for those loans. So um, we would, yes, we very much appreciate all our members. And uh, we look forward to helping not just our members, but all the businesses across the community. Thank you.
Okay. okay. Thank you so much, Eileen. Happy, we'll you, have you back on again and again. All right. So much more to come. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching Around the Peninsula. <laughs> Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Welcome back to Around the Peninsula. I'm so excited to see my hairstylist, Kathy Vilicic, <laughs> RPD resident, and just, you know, I'm so sorry for me and for you, you've been out of work with Scandia Salon at Golden Cove is where you're based. And um, we so appreciate you joining us. I know you're really excited to get back to work. So thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Of course, Kathy, what has it been like for you not being able to work for the past month? Well, it's, been, it's been a bit of a struggle, but I think that it's been good. It's almost like a reset button for us. Right. Um, and just sort of getting things in perspective and finding out, you know, really just kind of doing a lot of like soul searching in a way. I know it sounds really deep, but um, just, you know, figuring out what's really important right. and what's not. And, and how many of your clients have you heard from? Um, many, <laughs> many, many. Um, and I've been actually reaching out to them too and just checking in on them and, and seeing how they're doing and that it's, you know, we'll be, you know, soon. It won't be totally, um, back like we were before. It'll be a little different. We're all going to have to make some, um, compromises, but, you know, getting, looking forward to seeing them again. I'm curious, what kind of, of changes and adjustments do you think you'll have to make? Well, I think just with scheduling, mostly, because salons, I think people forget, salons are, we have to adhere to a really strict um, cleaning and sanitizing regimen anyway, so we're sort of used to that. Right. Um, if we do anything, it'll be just more, which, you know, it's not a big deal. It's a few more minutes of extra cleaning. Um, but I think in terms of scheduling, we'll have to probably not schedule quite as tight. We're going to stagger so that we're not all there at the same time. I know that, uh, of course, when this all happened, I think, first of all, I was lucky enough that you had highlighted my hair just right before it all happened. <laughs> to make, not to make it about me, it's for selfish reasons, but I immediately <laughs> called Kathy and I said, you know, how can you still help? Can you send me a color kit? And at first you didn't think you could because you, there's so many strict rules and regulations on your yeah. industry, but you that changed. So talk, talk about what you were able to navigate and figure out how to try to survive this. Initially, I was getting all these like messages saying, no, it's not legal, don't do it. You could lose your license. Um, you know, people are asking you to come to their homes. I'm like, absolutely not. I would never do that, just never. Um, and so I actually went on and like went to these other hairdressers that I know that are sort of high profile in LA and I've been emailing and kind of you know, messaging them asking what, cause I know they've been offering these like what they call root kits. Yeah. And um, so I just kept and looking at the California state board uh, laws and apparently we can in California, we can do that. We can provide these root kits that people can pick up um we it's we, for social distancing reasons we have to do it where they have to pick it up when you know kind of on our porch or whatever outside the salon I called you because i was like wow i've never in my entire life and i've been um, putting color in my hair for 30 years i've never right. done it myself my mom instructed me um and when i was in college if you ever get color in your hair i will pay for it elizabeth don't do it yourself and i feel grateful that i've been able to go to uh, professionals but that one experience of trying to, you know, paint my roots and make sure I wasn't turning <laughs> green. I was calling Maria. I said, "Oh my God, our our salon stylists are priceless. They're worth your worth your weight in gold." <laughs> Thank so you. Way, Liz and I both agree that this is an essential business. I can understand. <laughs> Hands down. Well, that that's that's nice. I mean. I, you know, it, that's a nice thing to, you know, be thought of that way. Kathy, thank you so much for being with us today and all the hair tips because we all need them. Yeah, thank you.
Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's nice to see people. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you back in your chair at Golden Cove at Scandia Salon. So thank take care. You. Thank and, you. Uh, now, Liz, I have to commend you for doing your own roots at home because this is not an easy thing to do. And uh, you did a great job, girl. I'm, thank you. I knew you were rooting for me, Maria. I'm going to share your home salon secrets. I'm not going to share my home salon secrets. <laughs> One other thing I want to add because we got to wrap it up. Um, you know, the salon where she is is right there at Golden Cove. Yes. Um, and so they're upstairs. And downstairs is my favorite fish market. And they've opened a year ago the great international uh, seafood market because they're an essential business and allowed to still operate. And their business is booming um, ever since this has happened, the situation with the pandemic. And so we're going to go step inside now and meet with the manager and he's going to give us a little update. Can't wait. Since uh, the COVID-19 has uh, um, erupted in, uh, around the world, um, we have seen a huge influx of customers coming into our store. Um, our sales are, are tremendous. They're, they're, I mean, the community is now embracing us completely. And I mean, it's just, it's wonderful to see all the new faces. And uh, we've actually expanded our, our line of goods as well to help give the customers what they're looking for. So we've incorporated chicken and beef. We've got a couple cuts of steaks. We get fish from all over the world. Um, our tunas, our swordfish, our mahi come out of Hawaii. Um, we have stuff that comes locally from Santa Barbara, our black cod, we have stuff coming out of San Diego. You know, luckily, I mean, we're a smaller store and the customers have really, you know, they come in, they have their masks on. We have our mask on. I mean, obviously I don't have for the interview right now, but yeah, we wear our masks. We have markings on the floor, you know, to really encourage the uh, social distancing. Just come on in and check us out. We, like I said, we've expanded our line of goods. So we have canned soups, we have hot soups, we have sandwiches, uh, in-house made salads. Um, we have a uh, pre-made kit now for Chipino. You just have to add the sauce to it and it feeds, you know, three to four people. So we, we've really expanded our line. We also have a delivery service through Mercado, um, Mercado.com, and they deliver within a 16 mile radius of the store. And that has taken off very, very well. Um, and the customers are very grateful that we have that option for them. All right, Liz, I know it is not possible for you to go shopping and not buy something because, you know, it was a store. So what did you get? I can never go to that seafood market and not get fish. So I bought some beautiful monk fish, which my husband fried up and it was delicious. And also I want to let you know, because you're a baker and you're Italian, that they started bringing in imported flour from Italy, which has been su super popular because you know how hard it is sometimes to get flour at the so store hard. right now. Yes. So I, for selfish reason, have a couple bags of Italian flour just for you because you're the baker at our PVTV and I, I, I want some of those beautiful Italian cookies the next time we get together, which I can't wait for that time to come. I also feel the exact same way and hopefully it'll be very soon. But in the meanwhile, I'll look up recipes for some Italian bread. I love that. Nice. And you continue being safe. I know you're sheltering in place and stay safe. And we want to wish all of our community health and happiness always. And um, we'll see you next time on Around the Peninsula. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. I'm Maria Soraya. And Liz, we are so glad that you are, are feeling better and well. Keep up the good work. And we'll see all of you next time. I'm Maria Soraya.